Hi, and welcome to this episode of Higher Dimensions. I want to talk about loving yourself. In my first video that I did where I talked about my awakening, I talked about how I was set, uh, this mission was initiated for me about learning to love myself. One of the things I find is that there's a lot of misunderstanding about what it means to actually love yourself. And one of the things that you'll hear a lot is, if you focus on loving yourself, if you focus on yourself too much, that that is the same as or leads to narcissism. And actually nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, self-love or loving yourself totally, completely and unconditionally is the exact opposite of narcissism. So let's talk about the structure of narcissism for a minute. The narcissist actually, deep down inside, is very lonely, is very uh, conflicted. There's a lot of insecurity and self-hatred that is underlying the persona and the way of being that the narcissist creates for themselves in the world. Because that person or the person who's struggling with these patterns has not been able to find real unconditional self-love, uh, love flowing from the self, or as we talked about in the last video, the divine self, which is love, uh, flowing into all the aspects of the personality, which leads to real wholeness and real stability and strength and power in your life. Instead of having that, what the narcissist has done is completely disowned the shadow self and has created a social self that is looking for love. And so everything in their life becomes a reflection of themselves. They're not able to see themselves from within and be able to transcend the social patterning that they have received and be able to allow the love from the divine self or from that deep well within to flow out to all the other aspects of them. And so what they do is they create this social self that then begins to look everywhere outside of themselves to fill that void for love. And that can take on any number of forms. There is such a thing as religious narcissism. In fact, some of the most religious people that I know are also some of the most narcissistic people that I know. They're looking outside themselves, be it even from God, to find love for themselves. And so they try to find that through observation of various uh, formulas or do's and don'ts, rules and regulations. They try to find that from uh, belief systems that say that God loves them or whatever. But to a large degree, they never experience that within themselves because, again, the key is they're looking outside themselves for something that needs to come from within themselves. Now, a narcissist will form relationships with people and will do all kinds of behaviors to try to garner love from the people in their life to try to fill that void that is inside of them. And so this person becomes very selfish in the sense that they're using every person, every circumstance, every situation in their life, every relationship. Uh, perhaps they're trying to attain a certain material or social status because they believe if they can attain that, then other people will admire them, other people will accept them. And what they find is, is no matter how much they try, they're still, uh, whatever they have to build outside themselves to feel loved, they have to maintain outside themselves to feel loved. So everything in their life becomes a reflection of themselves, and they self-reference every behavior, every thought, every word, every action. But deep within, they still feel empty and lonely and broken. So you can see then that narcissism is the exact opposite of self-love. And the first task, I believe, the first spiritual task, the first task to any kind of self-mastery is not learning to love others. It's learning to love yourself first. And then out of that unconditional love that you express for yourself, love just begins to flow out to other people. You stop doing things from selfish motivations externally because you're not looking externally or outside yourself for something that you're already receiving from within. So when you learn to totally and completely love and accept yourself, it sets you free from using people to try to get those needs met. Now you can begin to think about other people and you can begin to think about your actions in terms of how they affect other people. And when you've accepted all the aspects of yourself, then it's very easy for you to accept those same patterns or even patterns that are different than yours in other people. And this is why the great commandment, the great golden rule, the thing that Jesus taught 
was to love your neighbor as yourself. See, if I love myself conditionally, then when I go out and love my neighbor as myself, all I can offer them is that same conditional love. But when I learn to love myself unconditionally and accept myself unconditionally, then I have the opportunity from this relationship that I have with myself for it to flow out to other people and they can experience the same kind of love that I give to them that I'm already giving to myself. So you can see then that this idea of learning to love and learning to accept yourself is so powerful in setting you free to be able to actualize that divine self that is already within you. So if you haven't started on the journey, I want to encourage you to begin to make it your mission in life to love and accept yourself totally and without condition. And in order to do that, you have to begin to disconnect from your judgments. Whatever, all self-hatred is formulated out of a judgment that you inherited from society, that you inherited from the culture around you, that you then place and label upon yourself. And so the first thing that you and I have to start doing is we have to start taking an honest evaluation of who we are without fear of judgment, looking at the aspects of ourselves that are incongruent, the aspects of ourselves that are insecure, depressed, hateful, mean, lustful, whatever the case may be, and we look at those aspects of ourselves with celebration and with joy for being alive. We accept it as part of our human experience and we embrace those as opportunities for growth and power rather than disintegrating ourselves by creating a war inside ourselves where we judge aspects of ourselves and then condemn those aspects and try to push them away or try to change them in order to better ourselves. So the first step then in loving yourself is to stop judging yourself. So I'm going to do a couple videos on judgment uh, coming up. If you haven't subscribed, I'd encourage you to do so. If the content has helped you, I encourage you to share it. Uh, as always, you can like or comment below. I want to thank you for joining me for this. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch this. And again, whatever time it is for you as you're watching this, I hope it's great.